let's talk about solving radical equations. We're using this rule that if you have an equation, for example, a equals b, then a squared equals b squared. We're basically saying if you have an equation, then one move you can do to both sides is you can square both sides and you still have an equation. And this is helpful for equations like square root of x equals 5. You might know by inspection, inspection just by looking at it, that x should equal 25, but we're going to use this move where we're going to square both sides of the equation. It's a good habit to throw parentheses around everything on the left side and everything on the right side, and then your exponent of 2. Now, what's going on on the left side where we have this radical, now that we squared it, it's actually, well, we know what exponent of 2 means. It's this base square root of x times itself. So we doubled up that square root, and it leaves us with just x. On the right side of the equation, it's 5 squared, 5 to the second power, is 25. So that's how we're implementing this idea that if we have an equation, if we know that the, the left side equals the right side, then we can square both sides and still have the same equation, the same true equation. I want to mention something right now about solving radical equations. We should always be checking our answers, and it's not just a check to feel more confident that we have the correct answer. It's actually because when doing square to both sides, it's possible that we have a solution that actually does not check out, that all of the, our math steps are accurate, but the solution just doesn't check out. And I can give you a quick example. Square root of x equals negative 2. You might spot something wrong about this equation right away, that when we use this radical symbol, we always are indicating a positive result. So by saying the square root of some number equals negative 2, maybe you spotted that as a problem. But let's say we didn't spot that because there are some problems out there that are a little bit more involved and we can't right away spot that we have a situation like this where we're saying a square root equals a negative number. So let's go on and, and what we would do is square both sides. Square root of x to the second power, we know that, that basically the, the radical and the exponent of 2 will cancel each other. And remember, this is applying to square roots only, where we have an index of 2. So it's the square root that cancels with the exponent of 2. Leaves us with x. And negative 2 to the second power would be positive 4. When we check this answer back into our original equation, that square root of x equals negative 2, check means we're going to put a 4 in place of x, and we're basically seeing that problem, that square root of 4 really does not equal negative 2. It doesn't check out. So our steps were accurate. Definitely negative 2 to the second power is positive 4, and even if we were plugging a negative 4 in there, that definitely wouldn't equal negative 2. So this answer, x equals 4, is, you could call it extraneous. I see that often. It basically means that it works out with the math, but when we plug it back in to check, it really does not work. So it's not a solution. That x equals 4 is extraneous, and for this equation, this equation, square root of x equals negative 2, for that, there is no solution. So we'll work through examples, and we will consistently check our answer to avoid extraneous solutions. Here's our next example. It's an equation. We see that we've got this equal sign, and usually with an equation, we're trying to solve it. We're trying to find out what does x equal that would make this equation true. Now, the equations that you've solved before are probably, you started with linear, where you would work to get your x isolated on one side of the equation and a number on the other side, and that's how we would solve a linear equation. And perhaps uh, you've, I hope you've seen some solve equations by factoring, also solving quadratic equations. That took a different approach where we would put all of our terms onto one side and set it equal to zero so we could factor those terms that we had on the left side. With radical equations, we're trying to find out what is the value of, of that variable x, but our problem is that it's inside of a radical. So seeing that x in the, the radical is a roadblock 
to solving for x. So what we can do, just what we've seen before, square both sides. On the left side, we just doubled up this radical, so it's 3x minus 2 has come out of the radical. 5 to the second power. We don't have any radical to cancel, so we actually have to execute this 5 to the second power equals 25. Now we're looking at a nice linear equation. There's our variable x. has no exponent, so we'll just work to get the x isolated on the left side and see the number that results on the right side. So let's cancel the minus 2 with plus 2. And then we got a 3 times x. We'll do the opposite. Divide by 3. x equals 9. We do want to check. It's not so much of an option, but really should be required with radical equations. So my, I'm taking my solution 9. I'm going to plug it in place of that x and see if it does make this a true equation. Now, I don't want you to check bef after you do exponent of 2 to both sides. You should check the absolute original equation, how it looked before we did any moves to it. And the way I like to check is to split that equation into a left side and right side, and, and I'll work the two sides individually. And if they match up at the end, then we have a true equation. So I'm just going to leave this 5 that's alone on the right side. Leave that alone. Work the left side. So we have to do what's inside the parentheses, and you have to follow order of operations. So let's multiply before subtract. Square root of 25. So we do get 5 equals 5. That's a good check. So x equals 9 is our solution.